Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. So, so far we have learned about what a plugin is, how the plugin is created. And in this video, we are going to look at the WordPress code as to how WordPress loads that plugin. It'll be interesting to know how WordPress does things under the hood. Okay, so let's begin. So if you go to this blog, uh, but written by Tom McFarlane, you'll notice that he's created a really nice diagram of how WordPress code is loaded. So he's given three examples he here. Uh, first is if there's any front end request, which means if the user goes on to your root URL, your site URL from on the front end. Second is if it's an admin request wherein uh, you are under the dashboard, which means any of these requests, you are under the dashboard, you're going to pages, post, or, or any of these tabs here. Uh, and the next is the Ajax request. So if any of the data is being loaded into WordPress using an Ajax call, okay? So it follows this hierarchy and it says that first of all, you have this index.php uh, and under this, it uses the WP use themes. So let's go to the WordPress index.php. That's a main file when you have loaded your WordPress. Okay, so notice that we have this index.php file. Let's open that up. And over here, this is what it's talking about, WP use themes. And this basically tells WordPress to load the WordPress theme and output it. Okay, so that's a constant that's being defined here. And then it loads the WordPress environment and template. Okay, so that's coming from the WP block header. Let's go inside of that, okay? So what happens next? So inside of the WP blog header dot PHP, you have the WP did header. Okay, so if that is set, what does it do? It loads the WordPress environment and template. And if that is not set, it'll set the header, WordPress did header to true. Load the WordPress library using WP load dot PHP. Okay, so that's the next part. So let's go into that. Okay, and inside of this, it's going to use the wp-config.php, so that's our config.php, and notice that it's actually inside of the root directory, so let's follow this path. So what is it doing? It basically is going to set up the database security, multi-site, and user-defined constants. You can open it and we can check that. So let's open it up. Here it is. So base configuration file of WordPress. This is where your database name, your database password, and all of that information is there. Your security keys, your table prefixes, in case if you wanna you know, have a different prefix instead of having WP underscore post, if you wanna have something else, you, know, you have all of that, WP debug. So this is what's there. And from there, it goes to the WP settings.php. So let's go to the WP settings.php. And this is where a bunch of things is happening. So since we are not really discussing the entire WordPress core, we want to focus, we want to keep a focus on the plugins, how plugins are loaded. That is why we're just going to talk about the plugins, okay? So in the WP settings, uh, I'm not going to go through the entire file. You can check it out. All the comments are mentioned, so you'll know what's going on where, but let's focus on the plugin part. So first, what it does is it uses, it loads the must use plugins. So in the future, we will discuss about what the must use plugins are, but for now I can just tell you that. So if there are some important features without which your site cannot run, you know, okay, you need to have those features. You will create a plugin and put that in the must use plugins. So WordPress automatically loads that and the editor does not have to really activate that, it'll automatically activate that for you, okay? So we will get into the depth later on, but this is where WordPress is going to get all of the MU plugins, it's gonna get that as an array, it's gonna loop through it, and it's going to use the include once PHP function to include that uh, plug those plugins by looping through them, okay? Uh, it has also added the, uh, the hook over here, which fires once a single must use plugin has loaded. Okay, so in case if you wanna hook any functionalities, there's already a course about actions and filters, which are WordPress hooks in, which which you can watch to get better understanding of hooks, but just to tell you in a simple words that hooks basically allow us to hook in your functionality at that point, okay? So if you want to do something at this point where you know the MU plugins are loaded, you can do that. And then moving on, it loads all the network activated plugins. So in case if it's a multi-site, okay, then in that case, uh, it loads all of the network activated plugins. 
Then moving on, sets the cookie constants, variables, common global variables. Let's continue. Registers the default theme root directory. Okay, and this is where your plugin that we are creating, which goes inside of the plugin directory, are going to be activated. So this function is basically going to ensure that we get the list of all the valid plugins from WordPress and it's going to loop through it and it's going to include that particular plugin. Okay, so this is where your plugin is included. And if you want to hook into any functionalities after the plugin has been activated, you can use the add action hook and hook it to this particular hook, which is plugin underscore loaded. Now in the previous video, we learned about how to create this header, but how does WordPress even understand what these headers are, right? How does WordPress know to make sense out of it and use this information that you've added here? So for that, WordPress uses a function called get underscore plugin underscore data, okay? So this is actually inside of the WP admin forward slash includes forward slash plugin dot PHP. And please, like we established earlier that do not touch any of the core files. This is just for you understanding how things are working under the hood. But this is the function basically which parses the plugins content to retrieve the plugins metadata. So notice what happens here. So that's your default header. And it's the same one as we have here. So it uses the get file data function and then using this particular function it basically retrieves all the metadata from the file under the hood. Okay. So now you might be wondering, Imran, why do I need to know all of this, right? I mean, isn't the documentation already available how a plugin should be created and all I have to do is just include the header. Why do I need to know how WordPress is initializing and when is the plugin being loaded? If you ask me that, I'll say that's a good question. Why? Because sometimes when you are using, uh, let's say, any hooks and you may observe that that particular hook is not executing the function that you are using. You'll notice that the function that's hooked to that hook is not really working. So at that point, the knowledge of WordPress, how things are working under the hood becomes really crucial because then you could easily go to that particular hook and see where is that hook being executed? Is there any priority? What's the order in which that hook is being executed or what's the order WordPress is loading that? And maybe by increasing the priority of your hook, you can have your function execute earlier or later depending on your requirement, okay? Now, information's like what gets loaded first? Is it the plugin or is it the theme? So how would you know that? Well, taking a look at this chart, you can clearly see that first, the plugins are getting activated and then the theme, right? So now that we know the plugins get loaded first and then the theme, the next question comes, what about parent and child theme? Which one gets loaded first? So, so what do you see according to this particular chart? Which one do you think gets loaded first? Is the child or the parent? Absolutely. You can see that the child gets loaded first and then the parent. Similarly, the init hook is very, very important. Then you have the after setup theme where all of your plugin settings are loaded. For instance, registering your custom logo, custom background, adding support for thumbnails, all of these things, uh, you know, are actually hooked to the after setup theme. And that's part of your theme, actually. So these are just some bonus information I'm giving you. Of course, our main concern was how our plugins being loaded. So keeping the focus on that, now you've got an understanding of how things work under the hood. And you can explore more about this if you need to know. But I think this gives you a basic understanding of how and when the plugins are loaded. All right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran Ed Sayed. And uh, do start my repository to support my work. The repository name is Aquila Features. And do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Coditech. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.